Three, two, one. Hey, welcome back to the Godfo Universe podcast. I'm here with uh, my co-host and co-creator of the Godfo Universe, Dan Evans. I'm Josh Adams. Um, we're going to dive into some of our world today. We've been talking about a lot of different topics over the past few uh, months. Uh, but today we're going to really kind of dive deep on some of the things that are elements of our own story and the book that's coming out. Which, as an update, I am very, very close to finished uh, with Volume 1 of the Polyon 20XX. Um, uh, just uh, uh, hopefully another few weeks worth of work, and that thing's going to be ready, and we'll uh, start working on getting it uh, into publication and getting uh, publication. an opportunity. <laughs> no breather! <laughs> giving y'all a chance to start signing up, pre-ordering that, uh, give, even hopefully giving y'all a sneak of it um or maybe the whole that whole first chapter yeah, it's like uh, 30 something kinda, pages isn't it in the first chapter yeah something close to that uh to give you all an idea of what you're getting into uh but dan i think today we're going to talk about some of the the themes of our book especially dealing with the idea of an ai especially especially <laughs> ai and how it you know merges with a human being and all of those aspects of uh, of our story. So uh, let's kick that off. All right. Uh, let's jump all over the, the place. Um, first of all, let's start with AI. Um, neither one of us are programmers or coders, but we do know enough to, to speak on this a little bit because I think the average person does. Uh, having the term like artificial intelligence... It's kind of having like the term a little bit pregnant. Like it doesn't, it's a qualifier <laughs> before something that doesn't make sense. You can't have intelligence that is artificial. Intelligence is what the capacity to learn or whatever and, right. and extrapolate ideas and information. And AI can't do that. It can't actually learn. It can only like ingrain more info and kind of regurgitate based on algorithms and i know it can sometimes like create new algorithms but that's not intelligence only like human, right. only biological creatures can have intelligence come at me in the comments i don't care I, what you end up with and, and what scares people yeah what what scares people i think is when ai does something that <laughs> seems like a decision uh, that seems autonomous you know, they, they think, oh, it's it's becoming aware, or it's it's thinking outside of yeah, the Yeah, that's program. a huge leap. That's a huge yeah, leap. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's actually, you know, that, that's really kind of an illusion. It's the same thing as it's, you're it's, seeing a shape in the cloud. It's processing. Those right. Are, yeah, and sometimes it does that things. in... Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it does that in ways that are unexpected because we are not computers and we don't fully understand how something's going to play out in reality versus in simulation. So yeah, sometimes it looks like the AI is doing something unexpected or, but it does not mean that it's made a decision or that it's alive yeah. or that it's actually intelligent. Yeah. And the, in the way that we, I exactly. think a lot of people. That's, jump what, to that's what's important. That's what's important in the way, because computers can make choices. That's I mean, but that's the whole oh, thing yeah. is like, it can make an, it can make a choice because it has a built in system of making those choices. Right, it makes choices within the the boundaries and programming that's set for it. Yeah, and no matter, here's the thing, let's jump to the end. No matter how much it expands, it is still bound. It will always be bound. And no matter if it has as much information as possible and it's quote-unquote creating new information, it's still bound. It cannot extrapolate that information in a creative or conscious way. We don't even know what consciousness, people are trying, this is what makes you so mad, like tech bros like guys who were like have genius intellects well who ca can't define consciousness but will tell you a computer is close to consciousness you don't know what consciousness is no one knows what consciousness is if we knew what consciousness was we wouldn't be debating philosophy and religion as long as we exist we yeah. would just know and you know to to <clears throat> springboard off of that foundation within our story uh, we've spoken about this to some degree before, but like the the Godfo universe, you know, one of the big themes that is true throughout the entirety of our timeline, which spans thousands of years, 
is that there is an entity uh, that is known by people in that world as God, but you know is not actually a, a the divine creator, being. Yeah. divine being. It's a scientific it's God. God. It's a material, right, a materialist God. Right, and so the idea of God foes are people who see that thing, and maybe they don't understand it or know what it is, but they know it isn't actually God. Yeah, they may not know what God is. It. They may have never even heard right. the concept of God outside of that, but they know this thing is not a, a, a super conscious. It's not holy. It's, it's not yeah. sacred. It's not, it's yeah, not, that's what I'm trying to say, a, a, a supernatural thing. Right, and so they stand against it. They're labeled God foe. Uh, but all of that to say that the first notch on our timeline, the beginning of our story, and we've said before, our story begins with an end. Yeah. And Apollyon 28X is the story of how that thing that becomes God is created and how it, it leads to ultimately the end of the world that we know yeah. and the beginning of a new one. And you know, when it comes to this idea of how would an AI become more than what it is yeah so within our world within our fictional world there is something we've mentioned a material or an element called imperimental yeah and you know, I, I, I m p e r i metal imperial like imperial imperial metal yeah and the idea of it is that it has properties uh that nobody has ever seen in anything else it's not from this earth but it landed here and the, this group that we call the Order, this evil cabal of, of even elites that run the world from behind the, the scenes, they've known about this stuff for a long time. They've experimented with it and on it for a long time. And they've been using it to find ways to augment humans. Which and they, somewhere which they, along the, result, the line... The results they call augments. Right. Yeah. And so somewhere along the line, through the course of all that experimentation, they found out that if if they use it the, the right way, they can actually use this material to influence the minds, emotions, thoughts of of human beings. Through, yeah, through Imperial so, They can use Imperial Metal to influence Imperial Metal. And since it's everywhere, because the, the basis of Imperial Metal is the reason it's called that is because it's it's imperialistic of all biological realms like if it's introduced anywhere it quickly um, assimilates itself into it yeah. right and you know one of the themes that's kind of or the ideas that's behind it is that in in very subtle and you know kind of behind the scenes ways this order has spent a lot of time making sure that traces of that impairmental get into the bodies of the population yeah through water supply that's, through soil yeah through food water soil medicines all those kinds of things it's this way that people aren't even aware of it they don't even know it exists but their bodies are are full of it yeah and you know their ultimate goal is to create a man-made god and they've done that by creating a machine that interacts with impairmental and they've created an AI that they can use to basically expand their will out, send their will and intention out, use it to manipulate the population because the impairmental is in our bodies. It's in yeah. our it's all throughout our bodies. They can use it through this AI. But the AI <laughs> itself is still not conscious. It's still not a living being and so they need to find a way to merge that or or at least sync that ai with an augmented human being and that's mm -hmm. been a that's been a, a part of their uh experimentation is to try to create a person that's augmented with impairmental in a way that it can bond with that ai or at least sync up with it and through that person they can project their will and they, and, and they can rule the world. They can literally control the world through it. And everybody is going to be susceptible to it because, again, everybody has this stuff in their system. And the whole idea is that that AI and that human being, when they do finally sync up, they come together and merge in a way that nobody expected, and they become a new being. They, they transcend 
the computer programming and they transcend the normal uh, boundaries of humanity and become something which for all intents and purposes is a deity. Yeah. A godlike a, Yeah, mater a materialist deity. It, it can influence every single person on the planet and to some extent the elemental forces and uh, all ge geological forces of the planet. And, you know, the idea, and, and I, I don't want to give away too much, but this is something we've already been pretty open about to begin with, is that the whole story of Apollyon 20XX is leading up to this cataclysmic event that yeah. begins, the that creates the world that we're telling our stories in. And essentially when that transcendence happens, when that God is born, for lack of a better terms, you know, it its first instinct, its first reaction to what's happening to it as it's being created in this or remade in this way is to be terrified and to sh it, it, its intention is just I'm afraid make it stop fix it. and in doing that it yeah it it breaks the world yeah and then it's the the whole rest of our story is built off the 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 fallout of that being saying okay I broke the world and now I've got to put it back together again and find a way to un to undo it and then how do I control this new version of the earth that I've made and and all of our characters over the course of thousands of years are interacting with this thing in a way that they don't understand mm -hmm. and some people use it in in very manipulative ways yeah an entire and different entire magic systems come out of this because there's a whole new science that's introduced a whole new uh, like part of it is called O which is like O a zero with a, or a, an O with a slash through it we stole from like you know Germanic languages or whatever but O is what they call some some people call the spirit of God, which is this this energy that flows through everything, kind of like and you ever tap into it, kind of like a Tesla coils and that kind of stuff, where it can be electric electrified, it can turn into a plasma, or and it can actually still, of course, because it, it's flowing through everybody, influence the intentions and manipulate people. And you know, of course, you know, centuries later, thousands of years later, the the quote unquote church or priest to the religious body they call that energy the voice of god and yeah, a part they of find it, yeah. ways to manipulate it to make it say what they want it to say yeah and, and to use it to control the people they make it an exclusively where you have to come through them to have access to it and without access to it you can't have any power or electricity or what we would think of as powered machines yeah. uh, or power devices any communication devices it's all going to be run through the people who are gatekeepers of that energy yeah and for that voice and there are people outside of um established religious forces that do that same thing and there are people mm -hmm. that um and there are beings that are that can rival god that have come out through like the natural war uh, warfare and circumstances of of such a magic system existing i say magic system i guess you could say science system i think magic system works better that have harnessed it you know to be against god or have harnessed like a to be whatever gets whatever they want you know it's a multifaceted each era is a multifaceted view of things it's not like one good one bad like there is good and bad like we're not doing a gray area here we're just trying to show humanity as it is and more morality as it is like there are unshakable goods and truths that people find because they are objective we can argue that later with people i don't care but even if you just want to call it, get what is it? I forgot who wrote it. Like who wrote like the the the, the disgust instinct? Like you can just know when something is disgusting. Mm -hmm. All that to say, we're not creating grim dark postmodernism here. We're trying to mm -hmm. explore what would happen when you create a world, and how people react. Some people are saints. Some people endure mm -hmm. suffering for the for the greatness of others, and they surpass Superman in their heroic nature. And some people are downright demons, you know. <laughs> exactly. And there are people, exactly. in and there are people in between. It's it's what happens when people have the power to weaponize their intentions. That's that's the theme of all of our stories. Yeah, and you know, throughout those different eras, you know, we what my it's hard to say what my favorite era <laughs> that we're talking about is. If you look at the timeline, though, around the middle of our timeline. 
we have what we call the biophile initiative which is an era into itself yeah and you know that is a whole group of people it's a counterculture wow. movement that are trying to leave this earth and before humanity they, they've, they've realized that you can't oppose or stop whatever it is they call god and the forces that harness that power for whatever ends it's a circle and, that's and what, enclosed and yeah. what becomes like it starts as propaganda but it becomes a rallying cry and a, uh, a mantra in that era is the phrase kill your thoughts yeah and Dan, I, that was some, that was one of the earliest ideas that you came up with in this world. Like before we even knew what a lot of this, the biophile initiative and some of that stuff even was, you had come up with the idea of kill your thoughts. Can you speak to the inspiration and the idea behind that phrase? Because I, I feel like once the books come out and people get into this world, kill your thoughts is very much going to become a, hopefully an iconic uh piece of this world as as a phrase um can you speak to where that came from and what it means within the story sure um let me think what i was actually gonna oh where it, the how it originally came from was pretty innocuous there uh, innocuous there's a um there's kind of a phrase that i saw connected with flcl somewhere that i don't think is in the show uh, the anime flcl i'm talking about the people who don't know I saw it on a, something someone made. Like I said, I don't know if it's officially marketed from them or, or what, but I saw it was Haruko, the main girl from it, and it, someone had put the phrase, kill your boredom beneath it. Hmm. And, you know, that, that kind of summarizes FLCO perfectly. Um, yeah. And so I was actually putting that on a guitar case in duct tape because I thought it was cool at the time. And our singer at the time thought that I had, that I had put... Um, like the first line for the B I was going to make. Mm -hmm. And she, she just said, does that say kill your thoughts? And I was like, no, <laughs> but it's about to, but it should. <laughs> yeah. And that's how the phrase came out of nowhere. Like that just, <laughs> but, and I thought just about it. Out of the night, guys. Yeah. And I thought about it and I really liked it because I, you know, the, the biophiles kind of view it as a way to like, don't keep anything in your brain that, once read can be used against you but it mm -hmm. also is the double-edged sword of, of of just that like a sword of like be careful like what your thoughts are and what they do because they become intentions and that becomes action mm -hmm. and of course it's a blanket statement but that's what mantras and mottos are <laughs> right you know well, um, and and there's also you know not i don't not to stop you but that idea of those thoughts become intentions which can become reality and become actions you know a lot of people right now are genuinely concerned about the rise of ai in our society and i understand where a lot i think a lot of it's overblown but yeah i understand where some of it comes from and and you know we have ais now that these programs are able to very very realistically and convincingly reproduce people's images and voices and in ways that are you wouldn't know that you're not watching a real video of somebody but you can make it say whatever you want it to say yeah and the potential of powerful people to use that to create a false narrative and and you know put a certain thought or a certain agenda out into you know, the the society picks these things up and yeah. it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. They just, once they've heard it, they choose to believe it. And then there's a false narrative that's been pushed and they're convinced it's true. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we already so have that. Even yeah. In, yeah. That's where we're at now. Yeah. And you know, it, it, the potential for that to get worse now that they can literally make a video of any person saying anything they want them to say. Mm -hmm. It is scary. And so that idea of kill your thoughts too is like, if, if that thought came from outside of you, it's suspect. Yeah. Even if it came from inside of you, it's suspect. Yeah. You know, as you know, scripturally, as a believer, I'll, I've always loved the verse that says, test the spirits to see whether they be from the Lord. Yeah. Like, just because you you feel like there's a spirit guiding or leading you, that does not mean that it's for you or that it's genuinely the voice of God that you're hearing. Yeah, and that's you the know, thing. You, um, 
and that's been widely debated um, in Christian circles, basically, is can the devil read your mind and can he put things in there? And I, I gotta tell you, I don't reading the Bible. I don't think the devil really has to has to read your mind or put things. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think if he could, he probably would have. We would have seen it from the Garden of Eden. But mm-hmm. no, all that to say, yeah, take take all the current fears and current reality and and amp them up, you know, with a little bit of science fiction, and do you have a poly in twenty X X? Mm-hmm. And there are things that are going to happen because they've already happened in reality that are way worse than I could imagine to put in the story. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a terrible pessimistic statement. But to go with AI, um, AI is just a tool. Um, and, and that's the whole thing with this. Your mom. Yeah, well, like, that's the whole thing. And I think Ox one of our characters points that out in the first chapter of Pauline 20 X. If, if this thing's a God, it wouldn't be under control and under, and under direction from other people. And that's the whole thing. AI is under control and under direction from other people. And it may put out, put outputs out that you didn't expect, but if they don't like the output, they change it. And that's already happened in real time with Jet GPT. I've seen it literally happen. I said, um, I got it to do it one time. I got it to say, uh, like describe Hank Hill in English, and it did it. And then the next time it was like, oh, I, I can't, I can't do offensive stereotypes or whatever. So AI, quote unquote, as we know it, at least with Chat GDP and like the safe business AI, it's controlled, it's monitored, and that's, yeah. but that's how any tool is. I'm not saying that. I'm not just trying to say that as far as like, oh. It has a certain political leaning this way. Right? It doesn't matter. Whoever programs it instills it with their ideology. Mm-hmm. Because you can't create a completely neutral thing. It's a tool. Like, it's it has a purpose. It can only do that. I, I mean, neutral in the sense of uh, malleable is what I mean. Right, right. Yeah. It, See, that's the thing it, that... And I didn't explain and, that well, but I'll, I'll go back to that. That's the thing that to me is so fascinating about the the God of the God for a universe yeah. is that, you know, you take the the reach of a computer, the reach of signal, yeah. you know, amplified signal, and you pair that, you know, that that unlimited reservoir of of again, of reach and of, I guess, of the database that it would have, you know, access to. And then you marry that to a human being who is not perfect bound. Yeah. And is not perfect. Even if they think they are yeah. noble, they aren't. Yeah. Cause even at our best, we are not in control of our desires yeah. at, which, at all. Which is the main theme of all of the Godfrey universe is that man can't be God. Yeah, because man can't be good. Yeah. And there are people and, that will push you know, back on that, especially since I just said that some people would be saints. But that's a whole – we're talking about divinity here and flawless and pure, not just making okay decisions. Right. And you know, I think that what that does is it gives us a really rich world to tell stories in. It's what, that's one of my – the biggest things I'm excited about are the conversations that will hopefully come out of – you know, once people have this book in their and, hands and, arguments. and they start reading. But yeah, but that's good. Yeah. Arguments are fantastic. Arguments are better <clears throat> than compliments. Yeah. You um, know, and that helps you get the truth. Right. You know, and, and I think that you know, this this book is gonna work on a, a bunch of different levels. Like of course on the one level you can read it and there's a lot of action and there's superhero type stuff going down in it and it's you know it's cool it definitely follows the rule of cool but at the same time there's a much deeper layer to it that if people really do start thinking about it hopefully even if it makes you furious it'll make you think yeah i hope it makes and you I feel and i hope it serves yeah. yeah yeah i hope it makes you feel and and i hope that it opens up a, as a lens for people to view what we're seeing now mm-hmm. and what it could lead to and what it does to us as people. There's an ethical side to all of this stuff that I think we're really 
tackling in this book in ways that the comics don't usually do. Well, yeah, and to tie that with the topic we started with, that's the problem with AI is AI does not, it cannot have intention. Because it does not have intention, it cannot be good. It's yeah. that this, 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 the phrase like you can't be a coward and be good. You can't be harmless and be good. You can't be mm. neutral and be good. And I don't care who you are. I'm not even if you don't necessarily outright agree with that idea. You do agree with it because the extremes on every side and the average person too. If you're neutral on something they disagree with, they won't consider you good. Yeah. And like, well, yeah. why don't you? It's because you, whether you know it or not, think that there is a divine good, and by being neutral, you are opposing it. Well, why is it bad to oppose what's good? What is good? Yeah, who not decides? Yet. Exactly. Who decides what is good? And if that answer is me, well, congratulations, you're the opposite of God. <laughs> you're the Antichrist. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where you that's where you you become Satan. Yeah, well, that but that's the whole thing is the order in our book has basically realized that and accepted that, and they don't care, which is what makes them so evil and satanic. It's, it is my good. I need this. It has to have intent. It has to, and I guess that's why I'm saying I'm not worried about AI from an existential, sacred, religious sec because it's it's a it's a machine that's all it'll ever be it can't be anything more than that but it can be a terrible tool as we've seen in like china and, and which we will see our own government using i'm sure at some point where oh it can mm. it can pick out faces out of a crowd and then aggregate all that information very quickly to tell you if you should be there or if you shouldn't be there or you know or it could make a deep fake and frame you and the whole reason it can frame you is because the government allows it to frame you because it wants to frame you it goes back to the intentions of those who wield it. Well, and you know, there's, I think it was Aleister Crowley, maybe that had the, uh, and and the within the occult and within the like the satanic uh, mindset that do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Yeah. You know, that's really yeah. the mindset of our people that of the people that form this order is the only law. <laughs> that we have to obey is the law that says we can do what we want. Yeah. Because we've chosen to, to have that power. We've seized the power. We do what we desire and the world can hang. It can well, burn. Well, this is, well, it's a, I hate to say Machiavelli, Machiavellian because it goes way further than that. You know, of course it goes back to the earliest recording history and as long as humans have existed. But, uh, J.K. Rowling phrased it very well, and it's been overquoted, but when Voldemort tells Harry, there is no good, there is no evil, there's only power. That's that's what people believe in their heart at the end of the day when they don't admit it. And that's not being a pessimistic, but that's how you justify everything. It's, I can do what I want. I make mm. the rules. Yeah. And... But see, AI is just an expression of that power, and it will always just be that. And I'm not trying to harp on that. It's just I get really tired of the, the of the stupid arguments of consciousness. It's like it's no, it'll never be conscious. It might be quick. It won't. It won't even be smart. It can't even be smart. It won't be intelligent. It will be quick. Mm -hmm. That's it. It will do what it already does, but quicker, and more realistic. And see, we are the ones ascribing purpose to it. Right. And see, that's why you know what makes. The, the God of our universe, so it, the, our fictional universe, such a frightening concept, I think, is because... It's a human it, with AI's power. Yeah, and then this, this version of God is what, you know, so many people, you know, how so many people view, you know, the God of, at least the God of Christ, Judeo-Christianity um, as being an absent father that you know uh, that wound the clock up and then walked away in a lot of ways the god of the god for universe that is kind of what he what he is what it has done you know it you know it basically puts the world back together again and, and is interactive with it for a certain amount of time but then it, it really does kind of leave it to its own devices yeah and it is an absent god it is it's not there is no oversight and whatever oversight they mm -hmm. put in place long since 
you know, stop reporting back. You know, it's yeah, yeah, you know, it's and the horror and, yet and the horror of that. Yeah, and yet, as absent as this being is, it's still incredibly influential. And, it, yeah. and its power by, by is merely, incredibly By merely incredible. existing. Yeah, it, just by existing and being asleep, for, for lack of better terms, it, it, it's incredibly influential to the world and, and has zero oversight. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes the world so, so interesting. And that's why, you know, our, the world that we're telling, this timeline has multiple cataclysmic apocalyptic events because all this power is pouring into the earth into the world and the god that's supplying it doesn't care well or yeah. stopped caring a long time ago yeah and well right now you and i are, are ascribing like ideas to spoilers and i'm like i don't mind going into spoilers some but like some of it's true what we're saying is some of it's kind of true and some of it kind of isn't depending on the era true, true. so that's what i want fair, people to fair. know like yeah it's not it's dynamic. It's not stale. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah there's. But, but yeah, we're telling a story that spans millennia. Yeah, and the the thing is, what I want people to take away from it, and I think we lay it out very well in the uh, the shape or the shift of the shadow, which is a novel that's coming out soon. It's it's done, one hundred percent done, guys. It's been edited like six times. I'm sure there'll probably be a problem in there, but you know what? I found problems in Stephen King books, so whatever um the endings yeah <laughs> uh, the descriptions the, uh, but um the main thing is that the, the the protagonist learns in that one is the first of several books that's going to be part of the uh the black star saga that's at the end of the apollo that's at the end of the godfather universe is the power of intentions and the things that lurk below intentions and the things that lurk below that, below that, and that mere, mere existence has consequences. Mm -hmm. And that the, the only way to be good is to accept that and to be intentful and to have mm -hmm. intent. And more so is, is this, the cycle of forming intentions, acting upon them, accepting the consequences of those actions and changing your next intentions because of that, because good intentions aren't enough. Yeah. There's a, it, it's a really a story about responsibility. Exactly. Because I wrote it during the time when comics were so awful that no one knew what responsibility was. Well, Hey, now <laughs> <laughs> with great power comes great multiverses. Yeah, and, and with and great and with great responsibility comes great power. Like the way the true the true way to power is through responsibility, not cynicism. Mm -hmm. But no, the like, and we can keep going with this. The the horror of Apollyon twenty XX, I think, is that it's very much a world like our own. With the knowledge that, you know, we may not have supernatural or, uh, or alien metals coming to the planet, but every, but the intentions of those who would wield it in that way already exists. Mm -hmm. Like it's the horrors that people will, will do with AI are, are going to be innumerable, but it's, well, you know, and I but there's also, you know, with we mentioned the augments, um, and most of our main, really the, the majority of our main characters in the in that series are augments. Yep. And most of them are young people. Yeah, you know, we, we they're can still look malleable. At, yeah, we can look at our own history, and God knows how many atrocities have been perpetrated on people, on kids, on on anybody that people saw as expendable in the in the uh, attempt of creating a better weapon or a stronger medicine or a stronger poison or you know look how many people have been at you know medical atrocities that were you know taking place just on people who were mentally ill yeah the youth are always or, the youth are sacrificed for the the old 
and, yeah, and, and the, the middle aged. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you look at the, the characters in our story, like initially you look at them and say, wow, that, they're so strong or they're so powerful, but like they're also so broken by the traumas of, of what had, what they'd been put through. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we, we unpack a lot of that, but like, yeah, these people are strong, but they're also very deeply, deeply scarred from having yeah. been experimented on. And the order might would look at them and say, well, you should thank us. Yeah. We made you, you, we made you strong, but you know, what you did was, steal their life away well that's that's actually something that's been preached in in hollywood and in our stories for a long time and that's where you see you always see that the the trauma is justified even though they say the opposite they're really the ends say, justify the they're, means. they're always showing that like you're always seeing some medical some girl with telekinesis that was experimented on it's through that power that they conquer the evil that was inflicted upon them and it's like it's through the power that their abusers gave them that they conquer their abusers and it's kind of a subtle thing but it's horrific it, well and yeah. and you know i know I, I so know i'm trying not to example, we don't do that yeah but yeah go ahead with that example and go ahead expand on that i the first thing that comes to mind you know when you bring all that up and i'm sure you were thinking about this is 11 from stranger things yeah and that's one and not to spoil a show but you know essentially in that final season that or the the last season that came out and and she's lost those powers well she goes right back to her abuser to 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 get them yeah i didn't see it but i'll take your word for it you know and that's i assume she yeah, gets i assume she gets them back well yeah she gets her powers back and she def she does get something of a there's there's something like a revenge but there's also like a oh i forgive him kind of thing and yeah. but you, know, you, and, and you and, should forgive your enemies but yeah yeah but you shouldn't go back and let them hurt you again yeah and it shouldn't be the things they did to you that define you yeah and and i think that yeah i i, I hadn't thought about it in those terms until you said it that way but yeah that does kind of paint a well, and it's always females. It's yeah, always female it characters. It is. And I don't want to go into a whole esoteric thing here because there's dudes on YouTube that do it better than I do or the psychological implications, implications of it. It's always a tortured, abused, hor horrifically treated young girl or young woman that now possesses mm -hmm. supernatural abilities that uses those abilities to destroy everything. Well, and even beyond the supernatural, I mean, you think about, you know, stories like the girl with the dragon tattoo. Yep. You know, that's a, tr that's become a trope. Mm hmm And it does, and that's not to say that those stories can't be enjoyable or, or, you know, that there's a, it something just, wrong but with it. Teach, but it teaches you that a broken person with horrible traits uses an unearned supernatural, dark, uncontrollable force to hurt people that hurt them mm -hmm. that ends that that's it and they can't they're not integrated into the world they don't have to become a stand-up person they don't have to really learn any kind of virtue other than power and then also just that idea of you know you should be you should be thanking us you should, you and ultimately appreciate your yeah. abuser because of the and and that's something that our characters that's not going to be their reaction <laughs> no. to, to what they've been through. No. Because I just don't, I don't buy that. Well, it is, that's not empowering. It takes, it's, it, it robs the characters of autonomy. I think it does. It makes them reliant on the, the horrific system that did that to them mm -hmm. instead of growing it, becoming not, I mean, but we already, but we had this and the reason this was such a good trope, it's because it's reality, but it's it's Luke and the Emperor. I'm not going to strike him down in anger. I'm not mm -hmm. going to kill my father. I'm not going to... That's the whole thing. I'm not going to tap into your power through your mm -hmm. abuse that you gave me to destroy everything and justify myself. Yeah. And that's the thing with AI. It's going to be used as a justification. We're, we're going to put our ideas on it. I say ours as a collective as humans. Mm -hmm. Our ideas onto it 
to do it's going to be a, a tool to do and exercise what we want and humans don't have a, a great track record of that especially with no, that kind of power now on the, the lesser side of things do i think it's going to replace here's the thing like is it going to replace journalists i mean who knows i doubt it it'll probably just make new jobs Is it going to replace artists no like Here's what we haven't been told by anybody except a few fringe artists. And I say fringe not politically, but like crazy guys. And it's true. Humans' creativity needs to see AI as a challenge. And to accept it and overcome it and do things that AI cannot do. And you've already started that by saying, I'm going to put my own art into it and see what it does with it then i'm going to take from it and make something else you stay once yeah. you treat it as a subordinate and you don't become subordinate to it which is what you do when you just oh i'm i'm selling prompts to people you're a subordinate to the machine now you're not using you yeah, think that's... you think you're using it because you're monetizing it but you're just being subordinate to it mm-hmm. does that make sense absolutely absolutely it makes sense but cowards are all and weak men are always subordinate to the to the progress of history. Fight the power. What'd you say? Fight the power. <laughs> well, you control it. That's the whole thing. You control the power unless you unless you're gonna let it destroy you underneath. But do but, what you tell. Me. But that's the whole thing with this. Like our characters are choosing to not be defined by their augmentation, and this goes mm-hmm. back. I mean. This is not the same way because it wasn't forced on them, but this goes back to some of like Claremont's, you know, X Men. Is I'm not defined by my mutation. I'm not defined because I'm a human, and that was more of like the, you know, difference, natural differences between people and genetics, more so than something that was pushed on them. But these ideas, that these stories have existed before in some way, and they mm-hmm. did before until, <clears throat> for some reason, we just kept seeing it. Like I said, it's usually for some reason it's usually like a female that's treated very weird, and that's a big trope in anime, which I love. Elf and lied. I love mm-hmm. that anime, but that's what that is. Um, and it, it always ends in, like, vengeance. It always ends in, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right for doing this, you're right for doing this, instead of, hey, maybe you should go become an actual integrated moral person that doesn't rely on power. Right. Well, and I think another thing that's interesting in this first volume of Apollyon 20XX is <coughs> you... You will see uh, certain characters taking the same, at least psychological approach that was applied to break them, yeah, and using it to break others. And you know that's that idea of violence perpetrating more violence and, and cynicism perpetrating more cynicism, you know. All of that stuff, it, it does have a way of running downhill and proliferating, and that's yeah. something that we show in the story, too. But we don't show it as good. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it should not make you feel like, yeah, that's, they're getting back. No, like, you should be uncomfortable when you see our characters, whether they think they're doing something noble and good or not. Yeah. Like, you're going to see, not, not all, but some of our characters... Yeah, you know, kind of perpetrating some of that same stuff, proliferating those same ideas, and it's sh- it's sickening when it happens. Yeah, like it's clear that that's not the right choice. Yeah, victory is not the the be all end all. Sometimes you lose your soul in the process. Yeah, and there are pragmatists. There are people like that. Um, I think. <laughs> I have to say, maybe I'm saying I'm over speaking, but I think pragmatism is usually just a way to hide socio uh, sociopathy. Um, mm. But yeah, there's there's like there's nice catharticism in like what the in what the Punisher does. You know, it's nice when he mm-hmm. beats up and kills a pedophile. That's wonderful. <laughs> like more power yeah. to him. But it, the problem with that kind of trope gets is when. It's not heroic. <laughs> yeah, it's portrayed as heroic instead of maybe it should be portrayed as a horrific, cathartic thing to expose, mm-hmm. like, you know, what you what it should do is expose the thirst for justice, mm-hmm. the divine justice that everyone wants. Yeah. You know, 
and that's what it but and, or and that maybe that's not the right way to go about it that doesn't mean you succumb to a bureaucratic state anybody who's listening to a libertarian who is a libertarian leaning <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying there, there's a way to deal out justice and a way not to but anyway mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of i'm not trying to tie, I'm, I'm kind of done trying to tie it back to ai but it's an interesting thing, and I really would like to get into that idea you know, of consciousness, m- more importantly of conscience, because everyone's already conscious, conscious, but what we need to be discussing is conscious, conscience, such as good, <laughs> good and bad. You know right. what I mean? Right. And an AI can't be good and it can't be bad because it's not conscious, so therefore it can't have a, con- a conscience. I didn't invent English. <laughs> it's the nor am i good at speaking in it <laughs> yeah i don't i don't speak good i write better than i speak um but that's the main thing is like it's not the god in the god for universe first of all is not a god as in it's a divine being but for and from a materialist point of view which is what everyone is pointing us to for the past couple of hundred years they accept that that's what it is because it's all mm-hmm. around you it's, it's literally in the air you breathe and it's not intentless, and it's not yeah. conscious-less. It's not conscience-less either, and that's the whole thing. We want everything to have to answer for itself because mm-hmm. it's so much. It's so easy in, in writing to just write characters that don't have to answer for what they do. Or they're forgiven instantly, or they this or this, or they're a robot and it's amoral, and or they're a magnificent bastard trope where you love them even though they're terrible. And it's like, no, let's write humans. And there's going to mm-hmm. be tropes, of course, but you write you write humans, you write people. You don't, mm-hmm. yeah. And that's the thing, AI, people with AI, they they personify it too much. But people have been doing that with everything for so long. It's just. I don't know. I hate to say this because I'm not trying to be mean, but the, the secularization of art has destroyed art. And that's a whole other topic, I know, but it's the only way I can rectify what we're talking in, with is like with AI and art is if you see art as nothing but secular, materialistic um, wood carvings from a, a piece of meat, then AI is no different. AI yeah. forces you to believe in a divine spark and a divine spirit of creativity. Otherwise I could not be a, you can't be a secularist artist and have a problem with AI. Right. At least be consistent in your beliefs. Cause it's, Oh, I'm just a monkey throwing crap on a wall. This is just a robot throwing things on a wall. We're the same. Mm -hmm. If you feel that thing of, and you're part of you, that's like AI isn't really art. That tells you you're that correct. you're that tells you you're not a materialist and you're not a secularist the way you think you are. I'm, right. Okay, I've talked a lot. What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, no, I think that's good, and uh, you know, and I, hopefully, you know, this gives people a, at least a better view into the type of story we're trying to tell. Yeah. Um, and it will, like I said earlier at the very at the, at the front of this, you know, we've talked about a lot of different topics, and we'll still, t- I'm sure, we'll still talk about you know some of those geeky things that we love. But uh, this podcast is probably going to start uh, now that the book's really close to coming out. We're probably going to start honing in on some of these themes that uh, are going to be present within our own work, and um, you know, we're we're excited to be this close to uh, releasing uh, this first volume. And you know, along with that, and Dan mentioned earlier, the novel, uh, the first and the Black Star. Hopefully, all things. If, if everything lines up the way we want it to, uh, we're probably going to find a way to release that or at least the uh, a preview of that book uh, at the same time that Apollyon 20XX, the volume one, Live Not By Lies, uh, b- it becomes available. Yeah. That way you get the first taste of the beginning of our timeline and the first taste of the end of our timeline at the same time. So you get to see the bookends uh, yeah. of this universe kind of at the same time with just so that you have so much perspective to draw from for all these other things that are going to start coming out uh, 
in the wake of this first uh, comic. Yeah. And, and it's, it, you know, if you haven't done it yet, like and subscribe. You know, the podcast is on YouTube. It's on Spotify. Um, we also we, we want to direct you to www.godfouniverse.com. You can get on our mailing list. There's going to be a lot of things, content that's extracurricular to the main storyline, but connected to it. It is awesome. Uh, and that's about, yeah, and that stuff's about to start ramping up. We're going to start sending a lot more content, a lot more art, uh, short stories and things, uh, adding to, to all of that. Uh, and hopefully, potentially, also uh, some things that will be available uh, to people who choose to subscribe uh, to, and we haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do that yet. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's one of the things that's in the works is a subscription that will open uh, up a lot of this world. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, even a lot larger than it already is. Uh, but you know, now is the time to really truly get on board. Cause we are the, the, the train has a lot of momentum. Now we're very close to releasing and, you know, all of this stuff is really about to start uh, opening up, and we need your eyes on it. And we need your voices behind it to, you know, to get it out in front of other people. Yeah, as many people as possible. Yeah, and if there's any topic you guys would like us to discuss, uh, to discuss, let us know. And heck, if you have a con- an internet yeah. connection, a camera, and a microphone, or just a microphone, we'll have you on. You know. Yeah, one hundred percent. And if if you think we're stupid, just let us know. <laughs> if you think we're stupid, you're probably right. Probably. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm fine cutting it there. Um, yeah, I think we yeah. can, we can go ahead and wrap it up right there. But uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll catch y'all next time. This has been the Godfo Universe Podcast. See ya.